EU leaders meet tonight to discuss uh, new sanctions against Belarus after authorities in Minsk forced a Ryanair plane to land and arrested a passenger on board. Exiled Belarusian activist Roman Prot Protasevich was travelling from Greece to Lithuania when the aircraft was diverted to Belarus, escorted by a fighter jet under the pretense of a security alert. The incident has sparked global outrage, with Western leaders describing it as a hijacking and aviation piracy. Ireland and Ryanair say security agents were on the flight and left it after it touched down in Minsk. Belarus uh, re rejects the accusations as unfounded. The crowd at Vilnius Airport, waiting for hours for a plane that finally arrived, without Roman Protasevich on board. A message from the regime in Belarus, critics aren't safe anywhere, even in the air. I am, we are, Roman Protasevich, solidarity for the blogger and activist who now faces up to 15 years in prison. Protasevich was living in exile. He's a co-founder of Nichte, an activist channel on the Telegram messaging app used to help organize protests against the Belarusian government. On Sunday, the Ryanair flight he was on had almost reached Vilnius when it was forced to make a U-turn and head, with military escort seen here, to Minsk. Passengers described an hours-long ordeal on the ground that started off with Belarusian police taking Protasevich into custody. They just came and uh, they, uh, first of all, they took the, I think they, they took the, uh, the, the guy, the journalist, uh, out from the plane and then they started disembarking the passengers. European and U.S. diplomats quickly condemned the arrest as well as the diversion of the plane. EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen tweeted, the outrageous and illegal behavior of the regime in Belarus will have consequences. She continued, those responsible for the Ryanair hijacking must be sanctioned. Protasevich's Nista colleagues have also called for sanctions. International pressure should be increased. The protests will not help. People cannot fight guns with stones. There should be economic pressure, a boycott of the regime. European politicians should finally ask what would be effective. European leaders are discussing suspending transport links between Belarus and the EU, as well as suspending Belarusian overflights. Other sanctions are in the works, an effort to make the regime pay for its defiance of international and human rights law. Let's get the latest from the Belarusian capital. Journalist Hanna Lubyakova joins us from Minsk. Welcome to DW. Um, what has been uh, heard of Roman uh, Protasevich uh, since he left the plane? So what we know now, uh, we do not now uh, know much, uh, to be honest, but um, he is being held at the KGB prison, most probably. Um, there is no information about him there, uh, and the lawyer cannot reach him. Uh, the lawyer is not allowed to, uh, to meet him and talk to his defendant. Um, so we do not know what's happening behind uh, the walls of, of the prison. Um, there are currently three criminal cases that were launched against Roman Bandarenko in Belarus. Um, we do not know whether his um, kind of uh, the fact that he was on the KGB terrorist list was anyhow um, qualified for any terrorist accusations against him. So this is not known yet. Um, and basically, the uh, the authorities in Belarus are kind of um, silent about uh, the situation with Roman because I think um, the situation, kind of the effect of his arrest. Um, was something that they did not expect. And now they're trying to, to kind of hide, uh, silence this information. Right. Uh, the state media there in Belarus are reporting that the kidnap order came from the president himself. Why is this one 26-year-old so important to him? Um, well, indeed, Lukashenko said that he himself ordered to uh, kind of raise a fighter jet to escort the plane to the airport in Minsk. Um, Roman Bandarenka, uh, Roman Protasevich was on the list of, um, of terrorists by the KGB since November last year. He's a prominent journalist, he's a prominent blogger, he's been very active on social media and he uh, has helped to spread information about the protests, about police brutality. Um, 
um, about the situation in the country via this influential uh, Telegram channel called Nexta. Um, and that's kind of the most important Telegram channel in the country and was uh, crucial. It was um, basically a key, um, played a key role during the protest in August when there was no internet at all um, and uh, Telegram was only partly accessible. So uh, everybody knows about Roman Pratasevich in Belarus and he, um, um, he has been um, a prominent journalist uh, and, and, and kind of people are really concerned about his safety at the moment and what's happening with him right now. Right. Thank you for that. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, journalist at Hanna Lubyakova in Minsk. Let's get more on the EU reaction to this incident from uh, DW's uh, Brussels bureau chief, Alexandra von Narman. Welcome, Alexandra. Uh, so the EU leaders meeting tonight to discuss the bloc's reaction. Um, uh, what's on the table? An array of uh, potential punitive measures, that is what's on the table. Some member states, such as uh, Lithuania or Poland, are saying uh, that it's, uh, what's needed is a non-fly zone over Belarus. Uh, they are calling on suspending all European Union flights uh, over Belarus airspace. Uh, they are also in favor of banning the Belarusian state-owned airline from landing at European Union airports. And France uh, has always come, uh, come forward with a, a sort of a, a, a proposal to also discuss uh, suspending all traffic, including uh, ground uh, transit uh, from Belarus uh, to the European Union, something that uh, would have a major effect on the, the country's economy. And we will see what they are able to decide, but it's uh, totally uh, visible that they are under a lot of pressure to act after they have chosen a very strong language to condemn the incident in Minsk. So does that pressure mean that we are likely to see a unified reaction? Well, the decision today will definitely be another test for uh, the bloc's foreign policy that was struggling in the past. Uh, last week, uh, the European Union wanted to speak with one voice uh, and uh, to release a statement on the Israel-Gaza crisis that was not possible because Hungary blocked that statement. Hungary blocked also a declaration condemning China for its security law in Hong Kong. So, as you can see, uh, it's been difficult for the European Union to, to find, to speak with one voice. Uh, so we will see if uh, uh, Hungary and Viktor Orban is considered uh, a strong ally of Vladimir Putin, will be on board. Uh, but we at least can, can uh, expect a statement released by the majority of uh, member states. OK, uh, let's talk then uh, about uh, the influence of Russia behind this. We'll hear now from the CEO of Ryanair. That's, uh, this is Michael uh, O'Leary, who says that there were security agents on the flight. This was a case of state-sponsored... It was a state-sponsored hijack, it was state-sponsored piracy. I think it was very frightening for the crew, for the passengers um, who were held under armed guard, had their bags searched. Um, when it was clear, it appears that the intent of the Russian authorities was to uh, remove a journalist and his traveling companion. Uh, and, you know, we believe there was also some uh, KGB agents offloaded off the aircraft as well. Now, Alexander, the, the presumption is that President Lukashenko wouldn't have taken such a dramatic step without it being signed off by the Kremlin. So is this likely to affect the already fraught relations between the EU and Russia? Well, that is something that we can really assume. I mean, Russia was the reason for EU leaders to come together and have uh, the dinner tonight in the first place to discuss the relations with Russia that are being described as being at the lowest uh, level uh, in, in, in decades, uh, even according to EU foreign policy chief. Uh, however, there are always member states arguing that's important to, to try to work together with Russia because uh, the European Union needs Russia to of international crisis, for example. So uh, we'll see if uh, they can uh, have a common position on that. Uh, what is clear is this, that this operation in Minsk uh, could not happen without the support of Russia, its secret service. And it's also clear that Alexander Lukashenko could not be able to hold on to power for such a long time without Vladimir Putin's support.
Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Alexandra von Narman in Brussels.